Hi everyone, there's recently been a claim that a mathematical study has finally proven when exactly the Iliad was written. So according to the results of this study, supposedly, it was written in the year 762 BCE, which is broadly consistent with when historians have long believed that it was written. So this seems to tie in well with that pre-existing conclusion, but it points to a specific date, 762. That's the claim. But let's look into this more closely, because there's a lot more to this story than first meets the eye. So first of all, this isn't actually a recent claim. Actually, this is just a re-explanation of an analysis which was already done in 2013. So in 2013, this study was published in the journal Bioessays. And then in August of this year, 2025, another explanation of the same thing, the same thing, same study, the same process and everything was explained in the book Medicine in Homer. So the researchers behind this study, who were from the University of Reading, they compared the languages of Hittite, Homeric Greek, and Modern Greek, and they looked at lexical replacement to try to ascertain when Homeric Greek should be placed on a timeline. So the idea with lexical replacement is that words in languages tend to be replaced over time. We're not talking about evolution of words, like how if you take a word today and you trace it back over time, you'll see how it's evolved over the centuries. We're not talking about that we're talking about lexical replacement, which is when a word is actually replaced with an unrelated word. Like, for example, the word in English for dog wasn't dog in the past. It wasn't a previous form of dog, it was hound. So a few hundred years ago, this word hound was replaced with dog. So the idea is that over time, words have a tendency to get replaced, but different words tend to get replaced at different rates. The average half-life for a word is about 2,500 years. So in other words, there's, any given word has about a 50% chance of being replaced by an unrelated word in about 2,500 years. But of course, that's just the average, and it does differ dramatically depending on what word it is. Now there's a word list called the Swadesh word list, which is a list of about 200 words which are key concepts in supposedly all languages. The idea is that they're universal words for basic things like water or hand or kill, things like that. Really basic words which supposedly appear in all languages. So the researchers used this word list. They were able to find 173 words which were usable in these different languages, Hittite, Homeric Greek, and Modern Greek. And they were able to use the known rate of lexical replacement for each of these words and use a Bayesian analysis to ascertain, by comparing these three, these three languages, to ascertain when Homeric Greek should appear on a timeline. So they found that Homeric Greek and Modern Greek share about 50% of, of their vocabulary, at least limited to this Swedish word list. They share about 50% uh, of words, not that the words haven't evolved, but that they are cognates. So they're the same word, just evolved across the centuries. But nonetheless, 50% of the vocabulary within that word list is still cognate. And yet, Homeric Greek compared to Hittite is much lower, only 19.1% of their vocabulary matches. And with Hittite compared to modern Greek, we see an even lower rate of just 13.3% cognate words. So we can see from this analysis that they found what we would expect them to find. Hittite and modern Greek are the furthest apart, and modern Greek and Homeric Greek are closest together, and then you've got Hittite and Homeric Greek. So that's what we would expect to find, and that's what they found. So based on these figures that they found, by using a Bayesian analysis, they were able to ascertain where Homeric Greek should be placed on a timeline, based on the known rate of lexical replacement of these words that were used in the analysis. So that's the analysis which supposedly resulted in 762 BCE as the result for when Homeric Greek should be placed on a timeline. However, that's not actually what they found at first. What they found at first, just based on the pure linguistic data using this mathematical analysis, is that actually the result came back with 707 BCE. So that is when the mathematics shows that the Iliad was written, 707 BCE. 
So after describing this result, what the researchers mention is that this is just based on the pure linguistic information. It's not influenced whatsoever by any historical information. However, we do have some historical information available to us. We actually have lots, but the only one that's mentioned by these researchers is the fact that Homer is mentioned by Herodotus as a figure from the past. And Herodotus was writing in the mid-5th century BCE. So we know that Homer, and therefore the Iliad, must predate about 450 BCE. So they decided to run another Bayesian analysis, but slightly adjusted. So they included the starting assumption in their analysis that Homer should be placed in about 800 BCE with a 200 year standard deviation. So in other words, 200 years either side. So that was their starting assumption, or in other words, a normally distributed prior that they included in their Bayesian analysis. 800 BCE for the date of Homer with a 200 year standard deviation. They put that information into the Bayesian analysis specifically to make it push the mid 5th century BCE outside of the bounds of the most probable results. So when they used those figures in their Bayesian analysis, they came back with the result of 762 BCE. So that's where that figure comes from. The problem, of course, is that this is completely arbitrary. Why didn't they instead use a, a date of 700 BCE with a standard deviation of 100 years? That would result in, in the same thing. That would push the 5th century outside the bounds of most likely results. But it would obviously result in a different year for the most likely date of the composition of the Iliad. That's the problem. Their use of 800 BCE with a standard deviation of 200 years is what resulted in this specific year of 762 BCE, but it's completely arbitrary. There, there are all sorts of other options they could have used. Anyone could use bits of historical information to decide when to place Homer's likely date and then create a standard deviation. I mean, it's, it's completely arbitrary. And also the fact that they used that bit of historical data from Herodotus, when we also have other bits of historical data that could have been used. It's all just completely arbitrary. So that's the problem. I mean, I mean these researchers aren't historians. They're actually, from what I can tell, primarily biologists. So when we look into this study, there's no doubt whatsoever, it doesn't establish when the Iliad was written. Now, to be clear, I want to be absolutely clear, I'm not criticizing this study and I'm not criticizing the researchers behind it because I don't believe that these researchers were actually trying to establish when the Iliad was written. This is just personal speculation on my part, but I believe that the true purpose of this study was to demonstrate that an analysis, a mathematical analysis based on lexical replacement could be used accurately. In other words, it actually produces accurate results. I think that's the true purpose of this study, veiled with this idea that it's designed to try to establish when the, when the Iliad was written, because that's more interesting to readers, that's more interesting to publish. But I don't think that's what the researchers were actually trying to do. If we look at the results of what they explain in their conclusions, they say, our analysis is not informed or constrained in any way by historical, cultural or archaeological information about Homer or his works, being derived solely from information on shared cognates among Hittite and Homeric and modern Greek, and rates of lexical replacement in Indo-European languages. In spite of this, our estimated date falls roughly in the middle of the classists and historians' preferred date for Homer, representing a prediction spanning nearly three millennia. This, along with the consistency of the results, demonstrates a remarkable regularity in the ways that words are replaced over time and illustrates that language can be used, like genes, to aid in the investigation of questions in history, archaeology and anthropology. So I believe that was the true intent of this study. It wasn't to try to establish when the Iliad was written. I believe that the purpose of this was to demonstrate that mathematics can be used, along with an analysis of lexical replacement, to accurately establish when texts were written or when a particular form of language was used. But of course, if that was the case, then why didn't they use a text whose date of composition is already well known, like, for example, Herodotus's writings? Well, because that wouldn't be very interesting. So instead of using something which wouldn't be interesting, they used something where there's still a lot of debate about when exactly it was written, but nevertheless, there's still a general consensus. So they can use that as a marker to determine if their mathematical analysis worked, if it was accurate or not. 
but at the same time they can, they can present it as if it's adding to the debate, as if it's contributing to answering when the Iliad was really written, when actually they're using the already existing kind of consensus about when the Iliad was written as a marker to see if their analysis actually worked or not. That, I believe, was the true intent of the study, and in that sense, it's a very good study. The results did indeed conform to when historians believe the Iliad was written, more or less, at least within a hundred years. So it's actually very interesting, the results of this study. This shows that mathematics can be used with an analysis of lexical replacement to try to establish, roughly at least, when ancient texts were written. I think that's fascinating, and I think that's definitely a very important contribution to our our understanding of language and, and uh, how we can determine when ancient texts were written. I think this is a very useful study, and although some people have criticised it, I think they've missed the point behind it. Now, if you'd like to learn what genetic studies recently have revealed about the true nature of the Anglo-Saxon migration to Britain, then come back next time for my next video.